then we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA, an international plot to get the minds of your children. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. We may look a little different this today because we're in a strange studio here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network for technical reasons, so we apologize for that. And if you were hoping to see this show at Fridays at 4 o'clock, we're being preempted for the next three weeks by free speech as they do their pledge. But we will premiere on Fridays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time and repeat on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. All times are Eastern. And we have our regular uh, repeats at Sunday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. All Eastern time. So, of course, the actually most important thing this week is uh, remembering the 49 people massacred at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando one year ago as of Monday. We will remember those people and uh, tell you about memorials planned in Orlando and across the country. There are also equality marches set for 90 cities nationwide on June 11th. And a memorial march and rally for Gilbert Baker, creator of the rainbow flag, in New York on June 14th starts at the outside the Stonewall Inn at 6 p.m. No pride proclamation from the White House, however, uh, but they did manage to hire another anti-LGBT bigot for a key post. And Texas Governor Abbott has gone ahead and called the special session of the legislature to give them one more chance to pass anti-LGBT legislation. That anti-LGBT crusader, Scott Lively, I believe over in Uganda and elsewhere, is off the hook in a federal lawsuit. Atlanta, Georgia's police chief has come out as a lesbian. And the gay police officer who was killed in Paris in the terrorist attack in April was married posthumously. And I finally got Andy to go see A Doll's House Part 2. He loved it, and so will you. Okay. All right, well, we want to uh, start by, of course, remembering the horror of uh, June 12th, a year ago when the biggest mass murder uh, with, I guess, by an individual gunman in the history of the United States happened in Orlando at the Pulse nightclub on uh, Latin night at this LGBT nightclub. The right. people killed were uh, uh, primarily Latin, uh, male, female, gay, straight, bi, trans, uh, and we're going to devote the last uh, 20 minutes of our show to a very moving videotape that remembers them. And uh, there are actions all across the country to remember them. And you can go to uh, honorthemwithaction.org, honorthemwithaction.org, to find out where there might be one near you. And also in Orlando, it's called Orlando United Day, and they're having events all day, including an, uh, a sea to sea rainbow flag at 10 o'clock, a memorial at the Pulse at 11 a.m. and later in the evening at 10 o'clock, and a 7 p.m. memorial ceremony at Lake Eola Park in Orlando. Uh, in New York uh, on Monday the 12th, their uh, Gays Against Guns, which formed as a result of the Pulse Massacre, is holding an event outside the Stonewall Inn from 7 to 9 p.m. And did you see the Nightline uh, special on Orlando? I, I, I really I did. It barely even mentioned the people who were who were there. Killed. You know? It was just I mean, all about the cops and video of yeah. the cops. I mean, going it, that's inside. what was that was the news is yeah. that this video has been released. And it's horrific, but there it was. Uh, also on June 12th, church bells are going to toll in five countries, uh, 100 churches in five countries around the world to uh, commemorate uh, the victims of the Orlando shooting. 
and we do need to commemorate them and remember uh, the what happened. And one of the survivors uh, was uh, Jackie Sev Sevilla, Sevilla, a 20-year-old survivor of the shooting, and she died in a car accident this past she week. She was featured in the Nightline she was. Uh, show. She was. All right, so there's this other thing happening this weekend on Sunday the 11th. Uh, it's uh, the Equality March. It was dreamed up by one individual spontaneously. Uh, and it's, the main one is going to be in D.C. on Sunday, and you can go to equalitymarch2017.org uh, to find out about that and find out about others around the country. They list about 90 events. They're not all on this Sunday, and they're not all equality marches, but you'll get the idea. And uh, we'll see. We're sort of curious to see how that's going to turn out. L.A. is turning its pride parade into this march and a march of resistance. Uh, it's an untried event. Uh, we'll see how it turns and out. And there are regular LGBT pride celebrations really all year at this point. And yeah. if you are wondering where the one is near where you live, go to gaypridecalendar.com, gaypridecalendar.com. Uh, and here in New York, uh, two days after the uh, commemoration uh, and remembrance of the Pulse Massacre, a happier event, somewhat, on Wednesday, June 14th, also starting outside the Stonewall Inn, a uh, rally and march in memory of Gilbert Baker, our friend and the uh, creator of the rainbow flag. That's going to start at 6 on Wednesday the 14th. Google uh, did a doodle this week uh, to commemorate uh, uh, Gilbert. I don't know if we can get that animation going. Maybe not. On their not. homepage, yes. yeah. Yes. Oh, there, there it, it goes. Yeah. It, uh, it was very cute because it, it, it commemorates his sewing the flag and it's the and cutting up strips of uh, material. I believe they did it for his birthday. Which yes, they been, did. Which would June have been 2nd. his 66th birthday, yes. I think. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and it was very nice. Uh, also, so we also have the poster, I believe, for the June 14th event. There it is. Uh, and there's Gilbert. There's Gilbert. And and some of this is done in uh, uh, fonts and material that were done especially in his memory. So that's 6 p.m. on uh, June 14th at the Stonewall Inn. Okay. Uh, now, also in honor of Pride, someone came, uh, we have no idea who did this, but someone made this phony little poster for the New York City subways. Uh, <laughs> they are constantly posting these service information things, so they have copied this and said, uh, service information, holiday, June 1st to June 30th, Pride Month, no bigotry, hate and prejudice at this station. How does this affect my trip? It doesn't. Are we sure the MTA <laughs> didn't do this? <laughs> well, it does have the MTA logo, but no, I don't think they did it. And they well, have the a city, hashtag yeah. Pride Train. By the way, Cute. last week we talked about the Ash Whitaker case, a big transgender case that we won in the Seventh Circuit, yeah. uh, and we didn't know who the judges were. Well, uh, two of the, they were all women, three women. Uh, two were appointed by Bill Clinton, and one was appointed by Bush Sr. Yeah. Uh, all right, shall we move on to uh, Trump? Yes, uh, sadly. Well, uh, do not be expecting a pride proclamation from the Trump White House, but he is going to speak uh, this month at the Faith and Freedom Coalition Anti-LGBT Hate Fest. And while they didn't put out a pride proclamation, which of course Obama did for eight years and had an annual pride reception, uh, Trump's White House did find time to acknowledge Home Ownership Month in June, African American Music Appreciation Month, Oceans Month, Outdoors Month. Uh, I'm happy to report, though, that several departments are going ahead with Pride celebrations, mostly done by the LGBT employees and employee groups, although Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State, put out his own statement. But the State Department, Housing and Urban Development, Defense Department, the Small Business Administration, uh, Library of Congress are all holding Pride events, and Ivanka did a tweet to <laughs> her LGBT friends. I mean, tell you what you can do with your tweet, Ivanka. Exactly. Uh, and meanwhile, the rumor is that the United States may withdraw from the <coughs> United Nations Human Rights Council. 
<laughs> Although Nikki Haley says we support human rights. Yeah. No, we don't. Yeah. She didn't support. She made some progress in South Carolina, especially on getting rid of the Confederate flag, but she never supported LGBT well, rights. Well, you know, uh, Trump went to uh, Saudi Arabia and said, I'm not going to talk about your violations of human rights. The only place he raises human rights is about Cuba because he wants to end relations with them because Obama started them back. Uh, now, uh, then. Uh, his but, appointment. But, well, okay. Uh, the, her, her name is at, at HHS. He's appointed Valerie Huber, uh, who was a uh, part of an organization that discourages educators from affirming a transgender student's identity. She's been made chief of staff to the Assistant Secretary of Health uh, for of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And just parenthetically, I have to say, uh, if you haven't seen Trump's actual Rose Garden speech about withdrawing from the Paris Accords, uh. it is. Uh, one of the most shocking things I've heard him say, because he got up there and he gave the most paranoid speech about how the only reason this accord was done in the first place was to demean the United States and they're laughing at us and they want to rip us off. And it, it was astonishing. Well, don't forget where we're headed here. I mean, the other thing he did this week is he essentially completely undermined his uh, a d a defense of the travel ban at the Supreme Court. He wants to to lose that case. He wants to say the courts are totally illegitimate. Yes. He's partly said that already. Yes. But this is all by way of moving us towards a fascist state. And then we get a terrorist attack that either he allows or precipitates himself and declares martial law. And this is not beyond the realm of possibility. And the reporters sit in the briefing room and they keep asking over and over again, does he believe climate change is a hoax? That's not the right question. Right. There's so many other questions about why he thinks uh, you know, the world is laughing at us and and why he's getting up giving these paranoid statements and why he's pulling out of all these agreements. So I, I'm glad the reporters are I'm glad the Washington Post and the New York Times are coming up with information from leakers, yeah. but I'd really like them to start asking smarter questions. Now, we we knew that uh, the Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, won't defend LGBT rights, but she was really pressed on it by Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon, and uh, he, you know, tried to get her on the record about what are you going to do about kids across the country, about protecting them, and she just kept saying on areas where the law is unsettled, the department is not going to be issuing decrees. What she uh, promised was that the Department of Education would enforce all federal laws uh, with local schools. Uh, but as Merkley pointed out, federal laws don't protect LGBT students, and the Trump administration has withdrawn the one Obama administration guideline on treating transgender students uh, with respect. So she can sit there all day long and say she's following the law, but the laws don't protect LGBT students. So well, she is refusing to answer the question about federal funds going to schools that discriminate. Although increasingly, uh, the federal constitution is being found to protect LGBT students. But she's not talking about and that. the rest of us as well, even yeah. if we're not in school. Yeah. Uh, speaking of bigots, uh, the, the, we've told you about Scott Lively, who has <laughs> gone around the world to crusade for uh, against LGBT rights. And uh, in violation of what we've, we thought in violation of federal law, but interfering in our foreign affairs and things like that. Well, interfering in other countries' affairs. And uh, the LGBT activists in Uganda brilliantly a few years ago brought a lawsuit against Scott Lively in Springfield, Mass., under this law that says uh, you can sue U.S. citizens if they come over to your country and interfere with your affairs there. But a federal trial judge has now dismissed the suit. Uh, they felt compelled. They don't like him, but they felt compelled to do so based on a U.S. Supreme Court decision which gave a narrow reading of the broadly worded um, alien tort statute, which is what's at play here, but enacted in 1789. But the judge gave a brilliant uh, speech as he delivered this sad news and said, look, I can't let this suit go forward because it just is not uh, you just don't have enough jurisdiction, this Supreme Court case, I guess, rules. But did he violate international law? Absolutely. Did he do horrible things to LGBT people around the world? No question. I'm really sorry I have to dismiss this, but I do. Now, whether there's any appeal possible, 
I don't know whether they're going to pursue that. This case has been uh, a waiting decision for several years. Uh, it was wonderful that they brought it, humiliating to Scott Lively to have that brought in his hometown of Springfield, Mass. But no good decision at the moment. Well, Just the a good statement. The lieutenant governor of Texas is certainly pursuing uh, anti-gay uh, laws. They were unable to reach agreement in the Texas legislature this year, and he pressed very hard for a special session. And there is going to be a special ses session of the Texas legislature. Governor Greg Abbott called it. Uh, it's going to deal with a variety of issues, but he mainly wants to pass some transgender bathroom bill. Uh, it's uh, going to be on July 18th for 30 days. Lambda Legal is threatening to sue if they pass uh, such a bill. Yeah, well, we'll see how far they get with that. Uh, well, and uh, let's stay with news that affects uh, transgender people in California. Better news at the at Berkeley, at the University of California, has announced it will build gender a gender neutral locker room for all because they had been uh, forcing people into small individual places. Now they will have private changing rooms, private showers, private bathrooms in this facility, but everyone will be welcome. Uh, we, we also have another uh, uh, murder of a transgender woman to report in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Kenny, uh, Ken, Ken, K-E-N-N-E -N -N -E McFadden. 27-year-old was murdered uh, weeks ago in San Antonio, misgendered. Uh, her body was found in April 9th in the San Antonio River, but now have de it has been declared a homicide. But while uh, Texas Governor Abbott is calling this special session to pr try to pass an anti-trans bathroom bill, Oregon Governor Kate Brown, out bisexual, signed a gender expression and identity non-discrimination law for the state. We I have a picture of the happy occasion. Yeah, if they can dig that up. Uh, we're certainly not going in order. Uh, right. But maybe we'll have the picture of uh, Governor Kate Brown signing the gender law. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, in Michigan, an appeals court is, has said that uh, it is okay for a health club to cancel the membership of a woman who threw a fit uh, when she ran into a trans woman in a locker room. They were both clothed. There was nothing uh, provocative about any of it. The judge said you didn't suffer any harm. That's right. And the uh, health club said, uh, because the woman went on to really uh, trash the health club and, and persist in her complaints, and so the health club canceled her membership. Her trans panic defense is not working. <laughs> and in Illinois, they banned the gay panic defense, 104 to nothing in the House, and the bill goes to the governor. Yeah. Uh, in Georgia, we the... <laughs> Atlanta Chief of Police Erica Shields very casually in an interview with a magazine came out as a lesbian. We got a picture there? Yeah, we're, we're a it's a little hard to get all the pictures up, but that's okay. Okay. Uh, in uh, California, in San Luis Obispo, uh, a rainbow flag on a house was burned and. Uh, this was the mayor's flag. Turned out it was the mayor. Uh, and mayor's the, house. Well, the mayor has spoken up for LGBT rights and uh, controversially there, uh, uh, and, you know, because there was a teacher there in the in the school district who mm -hmm. said gays deserve to die because it's in the Bible. Mm. And that teacher has been dismissed, but there's backlash there. In Brooklyn, New York, a woman was uh, uh, accosted on the street, gay bashed, called a lesbian. This and was a subway, dyke. actually. Okay, and yeah. hit with an umbrella. Well, uh, beaten unconscious, uh, yeah. you know, uh, had a concussion, a broken eye socket, several cuts and requiring stitches. Uh, they, they uh, but the story is, is that they arrested this guy and they released him without bail. I mean, I'm not for overbearing bail, you know, because no, it's, it's but unconstitutional. When, when someone but is randomly attacking people on the street, you would think that there would be some attempt to some. do something. Some. In Austin, Texas, an iconic local uh, trans performer, Christy Long, 
was raped and beaten with a hammer on the back of the head. Uh, had to crawl out of her home, barely survived. Can we give them a better story? How about those sprinters at the uh, University of Minnesota? Uh, yeah. Do we have a picture of these guys? There they are. There they are. Brad Newman of Peshigo, Wisconsin, and Justin Raybon of Milwaukee posing for a track meet. They're, they're, they've come out, and they're partners, and it's all beautiful. Very cute, and everybody's very uh, happy. You know, uh, one, they, they said the reason they came out is because, you know, I, 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 they witnessed what happens, the anti-gay bullying that goes on, and they didn't feel that they could be silent. That is correct. Well, also not silent are a couple of uh, NFL football teams. The LA Rams uh, are the first to sponsor a pride event in Venice, California. Although the LA Chargers, formerly the San Diego Chargers, are also joining in on sponsoring the festivities. Well, that's a validation of the domino theory. <laughs> One exactly. And then they all want to do it. <laughs> well, two of them at least. Uh, Mitchell Gold and his yeah. Faith in America crowd are going to Phoenix, Arizona next week to confront a big Southern Baptist convention. Uh, they are taking medical professionals, religious people, a whole panoply of experts to try to talk to the Southern Baptists and convince them rationally to give up their anti-LGBT ways. They want them to stop saying it is a sin. It's not just yeah. a matter of tolerance or yeah. stop your anti-gay bigotry, but stop saying it's a sin. They want real fundamental change. Well, we would like some fundamental change in Nebraska because there's an eight-year-old girl there, an eight-year-old girl who's a, a, a star soccer player. She plays with older kids because she's so good. Eleven-year-olds. She, uh, she play, Yeah, and she, she has a short hair court, cut, so they cut her from the team. No. Uh, they cut the team from the tournament. Well, it, the, the they DQ'd the whole team from the tournament because of this girl being on the team. I, uh, I hope that, uh, that they will challenge this in a lawsuit and uh, end this practice because this is, this is something for the ACLU. I mean, you know, it, it's just, it's too much. They made her cry. You know, she's a good player. Well, she's getting supportive uh, notes from Abby Wambach and Mia Hamm from the U.S. women's soccer team saying, hang in there. Abby Wambach sent her a note saying, hey, I played with short hair and won a couple of international uh, championships. By the way, you remember the Rainbow Lounge gay bar that had that egregious police raid uh, yes. years ago in 2009? It burned down. In Fort Worth, Texas. Yep. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, well, here's terrible. In North Carolina, they're now in trial uh, of uh, several members of the Word of Faith uh, congregation. Thirty of them beat up a gay man in their congregation because the minister was yelling at him in the middle of a service. You are unclean and sinful. He tried to run out. They stopped him, beat the you-know-what out of them, out of him. So they're now on trial. Well, they wanted to expel his homosexual thing. demons. Oh they God. worship a false god at this church. Right. Uh, a couple of couple of positive historical notes in Ohio. They awarded the first ever uh, LGBTQ civil rights movement historic marker there for the LGBT Community Center in Cleveland, Greater Cleveland. And in Staten Island, uh, the, the Alice Austin House, mm. uh, open lesbian, has, has, has been, they've acknowledged the whole lesbian aspect of, it's already on the National Register of Historic Places, but this is something they're doing. They're adding the gay story there. All right, can we segue to international news? Uh, sure. Well, let's start, let's do it as a segue with uh, U.S.-Indonesia relations. We've told you about what's going on in Indonesia with uh, gay men being arrested, caned, uh, har Sharia law being invoked. So well, there were a couple of Well, Sharia law is in the Aceh uh, province, yes. yes. But now the rest of the country is getting into the act because uh, 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 the opposition parties, essentially, and local governments are doing this to show up the president. And that's what's happening. So it's there, awful. So there were small demonstrations in New York City and San Francisco in this last week. Pictures there of Andy those. Andy went to uh, the one in New York. 
Right. And they took the letter from the group and said that they will give it to the president uh, that was d delivered to the people there. Uh, that's the uh, group in New York. They're yeah. at 5 East 68th Street. And then there was another one in San Francisco, which was more of a press conference. Yeah. Uh, and they had a dialogue with the consul consular official, Michael Petrellis, there, talked to them. And, you know, they're pushing for, we're pushing for a response here. Yeah, there's Michael on the left and... Uh an Indonesian on the right? Yes. Okay. Well. All right. In other international news, well, as we uh, predicted last week, uh, the out gay 38-year-old Leo Varadkar, uh, Varadkar, yes. no, that's, Varadkar uh, that's it, uh, has been elected the head of the... Fine Gael Party, which is the center-right party, actually, in Ireland. Uh, now, it's not a majority party, so he's not going to be the prime minister, or Taoiseach, until they actually convene on June 13th, and the coalition partners have to approve this. But now, he is presumed to be the next prime minister of Ireland. Gay. And there he is with his partner, Dr. Matthew Barrett, uh, uh, Varadkar is also trained as a, a doctor. He is Irish and Indian. His father is Indian. His mother is Irish. He came out in 2015 and partly in response to the referendum on uh, same-sex marriage. And uh, he runs the welfare system in Ireland. He's had a lot of government posts. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Australia, we have more from the lovely Margaret Court, minister, 74 years old, and tennis great. She blames the rich U.S. gay lobby for trying to convert children to homosexuality. She called homosexuality lust for the flesh, and she said, I was 90 to 95 percent in the spirit, but some of what I said was in the flesh. <laughs> now, what are you trying to tell us, Margaret? Uh, but no, she also she's in her condemnation. She's she, saying she got a little, mostly she was being biblical, but she got a little carried away a little okay, in her language. Okay. Tennis uh, is full of lesbians, she said, if only, I say. And she also said that we have, uh, LG, she said we, she said this, we have LGBTQI people in our church. What are you doing there? <laughs> She also, it turns out, was very in favor of South African apartheid in the uh, 1970s. She said they really got it right there. And uh, apropos of my quote at the top of the show, she said the whole thing is a plot in our nation and in the nations of the world to get the minds of the children. But we got support from John McEnroe who said, you know, <coughs> this is all absolute horrible nonsense. And, and he didn't used to be so good on gay stuff. Well, <laughs> he is now. And yes, he, he is. He said, uh, when marriage equality is legalized in Australia, I'm going to get my El friend Elton John, and we're going to hold a mass same-sex wedding for hundreds of people right in Margaret Court Arena. And the actor the Hogan came game. out for this, and he's an you know, icon. Paul Hogan, he's yes. An, he's an icon in Australia. Well, in other marriage news, uh, President Michelle Bachelet in Chile has promised to go ahead and push for a new marriage law. And in Malta, the re-elected prime minister is also promising a marriage bill. And in Cambodia, there's a call to legalize gay marriage from 40 civil society groups and trade unions. They and want to follow the lead of Taiwan, which hasn't completely happened yet, but is happening. First couple married in Bermuda, a lesbian couple. The men who brought the lawsuit actually got married in Toronto well, and in France. Yes, we had a posthumous marriage. Yeah. We told you the horrible story of the uh, uh, out gay police officer, Javier Jugelet, He's in the picture there on the right that the memorial service uh, was killed on April 20th in a terrorist attack and his uh, partner uh, spoke, Etienne spoke, Cardi. Sp spoke movingly at this service and so they have uh, given them a po this is allowed in, in France a posthumous uh, marriage I assume so that he can if their plan if your plans to marry were interrupted like this and there was clearly a sincere plan to marry uh, the country will allow you to conduct a posthumous marriage and ex-president Hollande showed up at the service and it was all very moving as did the mayor of Paris. Uh, and in lighter uh, partnership news, in the Netherlands, a pair of longtime partners, gay vultures, have been <laughs> given credit for hatching an abandoned egg and nurturing the chick. It is apparently not uncommon. Uh, <laughs> although, uh, um, 
L LGBTQ advocates in China were forced to cancel a conference. Uh, they were uh, uh, told by authorities. Xi'an. They were, yeah, they were told that they were detained for eight hours for just for trying to organize. The authorities took their phones, demanded their passwords, the speaker lists. And how about N Nigeria, where a very prominent writer, Mr. Obi, uh, 24 years old, he wrote a, an essay called We're Here, We're Queer, We're Here. I don't know that he's gay himself, but he wrote this essay in the paper. He was kidnapped over this. And Death they don't threats. Know if, they don't know if a ransom was paid, but he finally got out a few he days later. He was released. Uh, in Bulgaria, they're holding a pride parade this weekend in Sofia, and the anti-gays are showing up to protest. Uh, could be a little dangerous there. But my favorite story of the week is that the Malaysian Health Ministry mm. uh, is offering $1,000 uh, for the best video on how to prevent homosexuality. It's just insane. I mean, the, obviously, the, the, health are, the Health Ministry is the one holding this contest. Uh, and I think we'll skip the Russian video because we don't have time for that. Uh, but Human Rights First put out a video of Russian lesbians who have gotten asylum here. That's a couple of minutes. If you go to Human Rights First, you can see that and, video. And there is going to be a march in solidarity with what's uh, for the, our Chechnyan brothers, mainly brothers and sisters who live there, uh, who are being persecuted. It's going to be uh, June 11th, noon to 2 p.m., Christopher Street Pier to Union Square. In Canada, where they have just for the first time raised the rainbow flag at Parliament, they want to acknowledge and compensate all the gay people who were thrown out of the military over the years. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't have good records on the, uh, you know, they don't have a computerized way of just pulling up who was discharged. They may have to go through every single person's record in the Canadian military to figure out who was discharged for homosexuality, and they may actually sit down and do that. Okay. In Poland and Warsaw, third, <laughs> estimates vary from 13,000 to 50,000 showed up at the Equality Parade. Uh, the conservative government is anti-partner rights, uh, but 40 embassies from around the world showed up to attend the Equality Parade. We are making progress. Yeah. Here, there, and everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and there was controversy at the Celebrate Israel parade in New York City where there was an LGBTQ contingent, but there were anti-Israel, because of what they do to Palestinians, uh, queers in that contingent, and it became a clash, and it was... It's not an easy thing. There is no thing. peace in the Middle East. No, or in New York City over this. Okay. HIV AIDS news. We're calling it HIV AIDS news because a viewer suggested to me we should call it HIV instead of AIDS. And because the government has changed its website from AIDS.gov to HIV.gov. And we do talk about other health issues. And according to the National Center for Transgender Equality, they did a survey. A third of transgender and gender nonconforming people have experienced discrimination at the doctor's office, including being denied treatment for broken bones. <sighs> Just, I mean, uh, unbelievable. At the request of activists, Hong Kong will reconsider its ban on gay men's blood donations. The, it's the student Christian movement that's demanding this. Uh, they held a demo there. Uh, they say it's unfair to homosexuals that HIV is transmitted through unprotected sex, and uh, this is discriminatory. Now, all they're asking is that they conform to what a lot of countries are changing to, which is a one-year ban on uh, gay men donating, you know, no sex for one year before they're allowed to donate, which is also inappropriate. But Our pal it's Linda Via Rosa. Via Rosa has a big article in the Times Magazine that you can read online, NewYorkTimes.com. Coming up in this Sunday's New York Times. Well, it's Times. out already. It's called America's Hidden HIV Epidemic Among Gay and Bisexual Men of Color, Especially in the South. She was here a couple of months ago as part of a panel discussion, and she told us that she'd been spending her time in Mississippi investigating HIV among gay black men there, and this is the lengthy uh, report on what she found. It's a very discouraging story. 
right. But that's this Sunday's uh, New York Times Magazine. Okay, we've got about five and a half minutes before we get to our last things. Um, entertainment news? Yep. All right. I did see Adele's House Part 2 at, at Anne's, Finally. At Anne's insistence. Well, I, I didn't have to. Yeah, look, <laughs> I am seconding Anne's recommendation of the play. There's Chris Cooper, uh, the other Chris Cooper, uh, and uh, Laurie Metcalf. Laurie Metcalf in the leads as Nora and Torvald. You know, it's all based on she walked out on him 15 years ago, shut the door behind her, left her kids behind. What happens when she shows back up 15 years later? It's an imagination of it, and it is, it, it is, it's, it's an intelligent play. It's, it totally engages you, and it's hilarious. It is hilarious. Uh, Laurie Metcalf is amazingly hilarious. And, folks, it has been extended until January 7th. You know, I uh, an old high school friend of mine was in town this weekend uh, visiting, and I told her to go see it. And she admitted to me over dinner that she had thought to herself, well, I don't know, you know, Northrop, she's such an intellectual. <laughs> well... <laughs> I don't know if I can go see a it's, play that uh, that she recommends. I mean... This woman's a lawyer. <laughs> you know... I am an intellectual. But she went to see it, and she admitted this to me because she loved the play and it, realized it was a comedy and clever well, and terrific. It's more than a comedy. I mean, yeah. it's, it's got a lot of issues, and it makes you think, yes. and, and you'll come out arguing about things, especially about marriage. And it has so many twists and turns. It does. It's, that's you the, think that's one the beauty thing, and then another, and then another. All four actors are nominated for Tony Awards that, yeah. this weekend. Uh, As is the play. Yeah, so, the Tonys are this Sunday. So Jane Howdy Shell, who plays the uh, nanny, uh, mm -hmm. Anne Marie, and Condola Rashad, who plays the daughter, uh, who's all, who is, I mean, they're all terrific. Uh, not extended to January is the show we've been recommending to you for months at the Japan Society, which closes this weekend on uh, June 11th. A third gender, beautiful youths in Japanese prints. Our associate producer, Bill Ballman, has been back to this several times and to panel discussions and stuff, and he's just crazy about it. Highly recommends it. So you can go to japansociety.org for all the details on where it is and how to see it. They're holding uh, this Friday a third gender pride ball. So uh, japansociety.org for all of that. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, on Sunday at 10 p.m., on the Smithsonian Channel, or maybe it's Saturday. Well, check it out. My Big Bollywood Wedding, uh, which includes several couples, including a lesbian couple. And congratulations to David France, whose new documentary he made, How to Survive a Plague. Now he's made The Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson. Uh, Marsha was a big, of course, uh, trans, a Stonewall veteran. Yeah. And, and uh, a fixture in the village who uh, we don't exactly know what happened to Marsha. She ended up in the river. She was murdered, uh, but uh, this explores the the case. She was murdered in 1992, and Netflix has bought this uh, documentary, so you'll be able to see it soon there. You can also see in L.A. at the Hollywood Museum the fourth annual Real to Real, R-E-A-L to R-E-E-L, Portrayals and Perceptions of LGBTQs in Hollywood. So this is a lot of movie stuff and TV stuff and entertainment. Uh, and that runs through September 4th. And the Frameline Film Festival, the biggest, most prominent LGBTQ film festival in the U.S., is coming up. And there are a couple of, I'm sure everything is great, but there are a couple of films in particular in there for you to watch for. One in San Francisco, Hot to Trot, uh, Gail Friedman's film about same-sex ballroom dancing at the gay games, great characters. And Lavender Scare, Josh Howard's uh, film about uh, the government's witch hunt of gay people uh, in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s. By J. Edgar Hoover, among <laughs> others. Uh, Gail and Josh are both former 60 Minutes producers, and uh, we recommend their 
films. Okay. All right. Well, well, you know, we always say after a disaster, after a horrible tragedy in the community, we're never going to forget, forget the victims. We're never going to forget these people. And we don't want to forget the, the 49 victims of the Pulse Massacre. I think the Orlando community has done an excellent job yes, they have. of uh, keeping the memory alive. Going and do a museum there about doing, it and everything. Dealing with these issues. They are. But uh, the Human Rights Campaign got a lot of prominent people to talk about each of the 49 victims and that is what we are going to show you uh, now is well, their, yeah, their it stories. It shows their pictures and tells a little about their lives and we just thought it was the most appropriate way uh, to remember them a year later. So this is the Human Rights Campaign's film uh, which you can also find on their site, Remembering the People Massacred at Pulse in Orlando. John Carlos Nieves Rodriguez, 27 years old. John started working at McDonald's at age 15 to help support his family and was recently made the manager of a check cashing store. He purchased his first home this spring so that his mother could live there too. He loved to escape to the beach, though his best friend called him a big teddy bear who was happy when everyone depended on him. Stanley Almodovar III, 23 years old. Stanley was a pharmaceutical technician who kidded that the drug life chose me. He always loved to change his hair color and style almost as much as he loved flirting with the camera. He once proclaimed, yes, I wear makeup and I'm still a man about it. Dianca Deidre Drayton, 32. Didi was an employee of the Pulse nightclub who had overcome struggles like a long-ago car accident and a more recent bout with drugs. She resumed attending church and writing poetry. Luis Daniel Gonde, 39 years old. Luis shared much with his partner in love and business, Juan Pablo Rivera Velasquez. They even went to the same Puerto Rican high school. At their salon, shy and affectionate Juan Pablo created hairstyles while gregarious Luis touched up clients' makeup and turned up the techno music. Juan Pablo Rivera Velasquez, 37 years old. Juan owned a hair salon together with his partner, Luis Daniel Conde. The salon had a loyal client base and occasionally offered free services to victims of domestic abuse. He and Luis were together for 16 years and died together at the club. Javier Jorge Reyes, 40 years old. Javier loves selling the latest fashions and accessories at Gucci, and the company has arranged for his body to be sent back to Puerto Rico. He playfully reimagined his name on Facebook as Harvey George Kings, and his pregnant friend recalled how he had an uncanny knack for making her baby kick. Shane Evan Tomlinson, 33 years old. Shane wild crowds as the lead singer of a cover band called Frequency. He posted on Facebook about his own anxiety after another performer, Christina Grimmie of The Voice, was gunned down in Orlando the night before. Luis Daniel Wilson Leon, 37. Danny liked to wear black and grow his sideburns long in his small town in Puerto Rico. He encountered many bullies and moved to Florida on his own. He fell in love with John Carlos Mendez Perez after they met at Perfumania, and the fragrance that started the romance was called Declaration by Cartier. Jean Carlos Mendez Perez, 35 years old. Jean sold fragrances at a Perfumania outlet. He later saw one appreciative customer who had taken his recommendation at a club, and the two began an eight-year relationship. Jean and Danny Wilson Leon died together at Pulse. Alejandro Barrios Martinez, 21 years old. Alejandro left his native Cuba in 2014 and was still perfecting his English. His mother was granted, through a letter to the new U.S. Embassy in Havana, a humanitarian visa to reclaim his body. 
Brenda Lee Marquez McCool, 49. She was a loving mother to 11 children. She survived cancer twice. She loved salsa dancing, which she was enjoying with her gay son, Isaiah, whom she shielded from the gunfire. Christopher Joseph Sanfeliz, 24 years old. Chris was a personal banker at J.P. Morgan Chase, visiting Orlando from Tampa. He was an excellent dancer who taught his friends how to do the bachata. Frankie Jimmy de Jesus Velasquez, 50 years old. Jimmy was a visual merchandiser at Forever 21, and he joked that he was older than the demographic. In his younger days, he traveled the world as a professional jibaro dancer. Juan Chavez Martinez, 25. Juan impressed his bosses as a housekeeping supervisor for resorts. He was one of three Mexican citizens who died at Pulse. They were all later honored by their homeland's government. Gerald Arthur Wright, 31 years old. Jerry loved both cats and dogs. His own canine was called Rusty. He had a quiet and kind personality that suited his Disney workplace, where he was assigned to a position on Main Street in the Magic Kingdom, and before that, Tomorrowland. Antonio Brown, 29 years old. Antonio, an alumnus of Florida A&M, handled human resources at a low store. In college, he joined the ROTC program and later served a year-long tour of duty in Kuwait. In 2012, the Army awarded him the rank of captain. Miguel Angel Oronato, 30 years old. Miguel, who came to the United States from Mexico at age four, was a soccer fan and a catering company manager. He leaves behind his three sons, who were 15, two, and one. He recently organized a Ferrari-themed birthday party for his youngest. Anthony Luis Lorano Disla, 25 years old. Anthony moved from Puerto Rico three years ago to become a choreographer. He showed a talent for dancing by age 10 and became a master of many styles, ballroom, tango, salsa, and Mambo. K.J. Morris, 37 years old. K.J. worked as a bouncer at Pulse and had moved from Hawaii in April to help her mother and grandmother. She loved drag performances, college basketball, and MMA fights. Edward Sotomayor, Jr., 34 years old. Edward made it his mission to open the doors for gay Americans to travel the world and recently coordinated the first ever gay cruise to Cuba. He had a signature accessory, his prized black top hat. Frank Hernandez, 27 years old. Frankie managed a Calvin Klein store and lived for fashion. He was planning to go to a pride celebration in New Orleans. He liked to show off a tattoo on his forearm that read, love has no gender. Akira Monet Murray, 18 years old. Akira was on vacation after her graduation from a Philadelphia Catholic high school. She was third in her class. She led the Lady Spurs basketball team with more than a thousand points and earned a full college scholarship. She was the youngest of the victims. Joel Rayon Panayawa, 31 years old. Joel found work on construction sites and sent portions of his paycheck home to relatives in Mexico. A loyal churchgoer, he came to America because his cousin said there was a lot of crime, violence, and death where he grew up. Jonathan Antonio Camuy Vega, 24 years old. Jonathan was an assistant producer on La Voz Kids, Telemundo's singing competition show for young viewers. He died, according to investigators, after standing between the shooter and his friend Mary, who was the mother of a newborn. Gilmari Rodriguez Sullivan, 24 years old. Mari planned this Saturday night out with friends, a treat after she gave birth to her second son three months ago. She steered everyone towards a gay club to avoid the kind of violence that had recently occurred at another local club. Geraldo Ortiz Jimenez, 25 years old. 
Geraldo, who liked to be called Drake, saved up for his trip from Puerto Rico to Orlando, all to see his pop idol, Selena Gomez, perform in concert the night before the shooting. He was working towards his college degree with big dreams and an optimistic outlook. Gilberto Ramon Silva Menendez, 25 years old. Gilberto was an only child who left Puerto Rico three years ago. He was completing his studies in healthcare management, and the dog show community saluted him as one of our own. His favorite breed was the St. Bernard. Mercedes Marisol Flores, 26 years old. Mercedes moved far from her home in Queens to study literature at Valencia College. She had a love of music fostered by close family members who were DJs. She hoped to become a party planner. Peter O. Gonzalez Cruz, 22 years old. Peter, who called himself Omi, worked for UPS and liked to draw. He was a fun magnet, so much so that his aunt said, if Peter is not at the party, no one wants to go. Rodolfo Ayala Ayala, 33 years old. Rody handled other people's blood donations for a living and was recently promoted to platelet supervisor. He was a skilled salsa dancer and also a prankster who could rock a bow tie. Paul Terrell Henry, 41 years old. Paul was a strong singer who could play the piano and the organ, though he never had a lesson. He worked in sales at a resort and was proud that one of his two daughters recently earned her high school diploma. Javier Emmanuel Serrano, 35 years old. Javier moved from Puerto Rico 10 years ago and booked gigs as a professional salsa dancer at Walt Disney World and on large cruise ships. He had a five-year-old son and often took side jobs for extra dollars. He recently found work at a shoe store because the hours were better for raising his boy. Tevin Eugene Crosby, 25 years old. Tevin was a young business owner of a Michigan-based marketing company with 20 employees. He spread enthusiasm and inspired ambition among his colleagues with motivational memes and the hashtag, love my team. Amanda Alvear, 25 years old. Amanda shed 180 pounds with the help of surgery and exercise. She hoped to leave her job in a pharmacy once she completed her nursing degree. She documented her new look in selfies and treated herself and her nieces to new clothes. Eddie Justice, 30 years old. Eddie worked as an accountant. He texted his mother during the attack. While waiting in the hospital, his mother described him as a young professional who lives in a sky house like the Jeffersons. She said he liked to live rich. Work, Eddie. His relatives described him as a mama's boy at heart, with a smile as bright as his future. Angel L. Candelario Padro, 28 years old. Angel had recently moved from Chicago to Orlando and found a job that he liked at a medical practice for eye doctors. He had his own mission, though, on the side, leading workout classes as a Zumba instructor. Simon Adrian Carrillo Fernandez, 31 years old. Simon boosted the morale at the McDonald's that he managed by bringing his colleagues cakes on their birthdays. Born in Venezuela, he had just traveled to Canada with his partner, Oscar Aracena Montero. They stopped to see Niagara Falls. Oscar Aracena Montero, 26 years old. Oscar, a business student, recently returned home from a Canadian vacation with his partner, Simone, who also died at Pulse. Last year, the two chose three chihuahuas to liven up the house that they bought together. Jason Benjamin Josephat, 19 years old. Jason was studying computer science at Valencia College. He developed passions for photography, hip hop dance, and gymnastics. And his high school classmates recalled he would playfully challenge his fellow members of the cheer squad to tumbling contests. Leroy Valentin Fernandez, 25 years old. Roy recently moved to Orlando to care for his mother and took a job as an apartment rental agent. His co-workers uh, recalled that he liked to blast Adele songs in the office. In his spare time, he choreographed original drag routines with many set to Beyonce and J-Lo tracks. Enrique Rios, 
25 years old. Enrique was a faithful churchgoer, nursing student, and elder care social worker. He lived with his grandmother in Brooklyn. He could dance the bachata and the soca. He was on vacation in Orlando to celebrate a good friend's birthday. Daryl Roman Burt II, 29 years old. Daryl administered financial aid to military students at a Jacksonville college. A former McDonald's manager, he just completed his master's degree in human resources management and was celebrating at Pulse. Corey James Connell, 21 years old. Corey balanced his studies at Valencia College with his job at a public supermarket. He was working toward a goal, to join the fire department. After his passing, fire officials made him an honorary firefighter. Martin Benitez Torres, 33 years old. Martin was newly enrolled as a pharmacy student in Tampa. He was in Orlando to visit his aunt and other family members. That day, he posted photos of the food that his mother in Puerto Rico had sent to Orlando for all their relatives to enjoy. Luis Vielma, 22 years old. Luis was working towards becoming an EMT first responder while he worked at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Studios Orlando. Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling tweeted how her connection to Luis touched her so deeply that she couldn't stop crying. Omar Capo, 20 years old. Omar held jobs at Target and Starbucks while he set his sights on being a professional dancer and actor. After the shooting, his grandmother flew to be with family, and JetBlue flight attendants circulated a note of support for passengers to sign. Upon landing, each deplaning passenger offered her personal condolences, and some added long letters and cash donations. Eric Ivan Ortiz Rivera, 36 years old. Eric held retail jobs at Toys R Us and then Ross. He did not frequent clubs like Pulse, but followed a crowd of friends who had begun the night at a housewarming party. He is survived by his husband of nearly one year. Juan Ramon Guerrero, 22 years old. Juan was in his third year of college with a side job as a telemarketer and had begun a romance with Drew Leinanen. He came out to his family not long ago, and for his upcoming birthday, they were planning to go ahead with his party anyway, with his mother cooking his favorite foods. Christopher Andrew Leinanen, 32 years old. Christopher, who went by Drew, was a mental health therapist who founded a gay-straight alliance in high school. He was a vegetarian, an EDM enthusiast, and a film buff with a massive collection of DVDs. Friends and family predicted wedding bells for Drew and his soulmate Juan, who died with him at Pulse. Wow. Uh, that film was made, by the way, by Ryan Murphy, the uh, well-known producer, director. And thank you to HRC for putting it together. Uh, as the people in Orlando are asking, honor them with action. Go to honorthemwithaction.org and find out about a, a commemoration near you. And honor them with action throughout the year. I'm struck, uh, as I often am in a case like this, by how they were just regular people with so much life ahead Promise. of them. And what a hole that leaves in so many people's lives to lose them. And uh, that's tremendously sad. So, so here in New York on Monday the 12th, we will be in front of the Stonewall Inn commemorating their lives and, uh, and promising to honor them with and, action. And things, of course, all day long in Orlando. And we'll, we'll also see, I'll also see you at the uh, march for the Chechnyan brothers who are being killed there on June uh, 11th uh, on, at uh, noon at Christopher Street Pier. We're gonna march. So Monday, 7 p.m. at Stonewall for the people killed at the Pulse nightclub. Yes. Wednesday, 6 p.m. to march and rally in memory of Gilbert Baker. And at the to Stonewall. Also at the Stonewall and to celebrate the uh, rainbow flag. And we'll be back here next week. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye.